Have you ever wondered why you can't stop eating potato chips? Potato chips. Lay's even got a slogan, bet you can't eat just one. Lay's potato chips, bet you can't eat one. It's obvious that it's all about the crunchiness and the taste, but is it really so obvious? You know what hooks you, but do you know why? We're gonna tell you why you can't stop eating foods containing the combination of sugar, fat, and salt. Why potato chip manufacturers come up with new flavors so often, what eating chips have to do with tobacco, and why you love the crunchiness so much. What's about this hyper-palatable combination of salt, fat, and sugar? Salt, fat, and sugar are more than just simple ingredients. They have the power to take control of our eating habits. These three components are often found in foods like Lay's potato chips, and they play a significant role in why we find them so irresistible. Salt, for instance, not only elevates the chip's flavor, but also excites our taste buds, making every bite more tempting. We'll get into more details later on, but it triggers our brain's reward system, releasing dopamine, a chemical that gives us feelings of pleasure and motivation. As a result, the more salt-laden foods we eat, the more we crave. On the other hand, fat adds that satisfying texture and sugar contributes to the addictive taste. When you combine salt, sugar, and fat, it's a powerful trio that amplifies our cravings. The combination intensifies our enjoyment and rewards our brains even more than if we tasted each ingredient separately. This mixture is why some foods like chips are so hard to resist, often leading us to overindulge. What about the sugar and fat combo? When we eat something sweet, our taste buds quickly send signals to the brain, letting it know about the sugar. At the same time, if there's fat in the food, another signal is sent from a different part of our mouth through a nerve called the trigeminal nerve, which is directly connected to the brain. This means that our brain gets two separate alerts straight away, one from the sugar and one from the fat. It's like a double alert system, making the food even more appealing to us. This double arousal might be one reason why foods with both sugar and fat like potato chips are so tempting and satisfying. There's a phenomenal book on food addiction called Hooked, Food, Free Will, and How the Food Giants Exploit Our Addictions. It was written by an investigative journalist, Michael Moss, who has even won a Pulitzer Prize for his work. This book will help you open your eyes and dive deep into the addictive nature of ultra-processed foods. So what's in those chips? Well, we found the answer in Michael's book. The book says the mix of fat, sugar, and salt in our foods isn't something you usually find in nature. For example, it's rare for natural foods to have both fat and sugar, but these elements are commonly found together in today's processed foods like potato chips in this case. On average, these kinds of foods have about 24% fat and 57% sugar. And if you weren't aware, even foods that are supposed to be savory, like sauces and bread, have been made sweeter over time. So why is it so hard for you to stop eating chips? You see, the key aspect to consider is how quickly a substance affects our brain. The faster it acts, the more it can drive us to act compulsively. This rapid effect is often a defining feature of addictive substances. Simply put, the faster the effect, the more tempting it is. What might really shock you is that ultra-processed foods like chips might be even more addictive than drugs or cigarettes. How can that be? When we use tobacco or drugs, they have to get into our blood to affect our brain. For example, when you smoke, it takes about 10 seconds for the nicotine to go from the mouth to the brain. So it's just a 10 second gap from wanting to smoke to feeling the pleasure from it. For that simple reason, in the 1980s, people began to smoke crack instead of snorting cocaine. Smoking made the drug reach the brain faster, in just 10 seconds instead of 5 to 10 minutes. So smoking gave a quicker and stronger feeling than taking it through the nose. What does it have to do with chips? Let's get into details of the infamous combo of sugar, salt, and fat. Sugar doesn't have to be digested and get into our bloodstream. Instead, the signal moves directly from our mouth to our brain, and it does it 20 times faster than cigarettes. The quicker the excitement, the faster it fades, pushing you to look for more food and becoming addicted. What differentiates potato chips from other food is the powerful trio of salt, sugar, and fat in every bite. It is salt that is the most important element in making you overeat. It's the first thing on the chip's surface that touches your saliva and sends a salty flavor signal to the pleasure center of your brain. This makes you want more. We don't have to mention the companies like Lay's, know it, right? Keep quiet. And have you wondered why we have such a variety of potato chips? New York cheddar, sea salt, sour cream and onion, is it 10 or maybe even 20 diverse tastes? These varieties didn't just happen by chance, they're created for a reason. 
Again, Michael Moss comes in with the answer. He says in his book that we're susceptible to what's known in food science as sensory-specific satiety. In simple terms, eating too much of the same taste or smell makes us feel full. But if the flavor changes even slightly, like going from barbecue to honey barbecue, our brain gets excited and we continue eating. This natural desire for different tastes actually helped our hunter-gatherer ancestors survive by encouraging them to eat a variety of foods, each with different nutrients. And that's why potato chip companies come up with different tastes so often. And there comes our stomach. Although it is our brain that mainly drives our food cravings, our stomach also plays a role in controlling our hunger. Eating foods rich in fiber and water, like whole grains and vegetables, makes our stomach expand. This sends a signal to the brain telling us to stop eating. However, when we consume foods high in salt, sugar, and fat, this stop eating signal is delayed. By the time we finally get the message, we've often already eaten too much. The main takeaway here is that our natural body systems shaped by our biology and genes don't work well within the composition of highly processed foods. Our natural built-in mechanisms not to overeat simply fail. That's why it's almost impossible for you to eat just one chip. Everyone, including the manufacturers, knows we love the crunchiness of chips. Have you ever wondered why? The obvious is that we just like the crunchy sound. You knew that since you heard the first sound at the beginning of the video, but why do we? In 1990, an interesting experiment was conducted by William E. Lee, a specialist in the sound of food. Before teaching at the University of South Florida, Lee was a sensory researcher at Procter & Gamble, focusing on the crunch of potato chips. When test participants wore headphones that played white noise to block out the sound, they ended up eating fewer chips. In this experiment, William Lee found out and proved that people like chips that make more noise, but it still doesn't answer the question of why it happens in the first place. A 2003 research paper in the Journal of Sensory Studies adds another layer to why we like crunchy chips. In the study, people wore headphones and ate potato chips, rating how fresh they thought the chips were as they ate. Researchers didn't inform the study participants that they changed the sound levels coming through the headphones while people were eating chips. That was a feedback loop meaning that the participants heard themselves eating the chips, but much louder. The study discovered that when chips sounded crunchier, people believed they were fresher, even if that wasn't really the case. Pretty awesome, right? Specialists theorized that the link between crunchiness and freshness could go back to our early ancestors. Early humans knew that a slimy texture often meant that the food was spoiled. That sort of texture turns many people off. Just ask anyone who dislikes the feel of foods like okra, eel, or avocado. On the other hand, crunchy carrots, crispy apples, and snappy celery were signals for our ancestors that the food was fresh and healthy. Are you feeling hungry after hearing words like crunch, crisp, and snap? A 2021 study in food quality and preference found that even reading these sound-imitating words can influence how you think about food. But before you grab a bag of chips, consider putting on some noise-canceling headphones, unless you plan to finish off the whole bag.